There's this really interesting dynamic that happens in canine infectious respiratory disease complex, CIRDC. It's one that's only come to light in probably the last handful of years, which is the role of not only multi-pathogen infections, but the glue that holds them together, parainfluenza. And so when we talk about PI, um, canine parrot influenza virus, it really seems to hold the key to open the door to just raging infection in the canine respiratory system. Just as we have gotten better at characterizing, um, using better diagnostics, molecular diagnostic techniques, characterizing the pathogens that are causing the infection in CIRDC, so has our vaccine technology. There were some key uh, papers. So one talked about the role that canine pair influenza plays really as kind of the glue that holds that CIRDC family together. Um, but then also the um, understanding of the role of mucosally administered vaccines, the role that IgA and IgG play in our immune system's response, uh, most especially with respiratory infections. IgA is found mostly at the mucosal layer of mucous membranes, okay? IgG is the most common and it circulates in the blood. What's interesting though is that um, IgG will do you virtually no good at a mucous membrane. And so if you're parainfluenza and you encounter a mucous membrane and it doesn't have IgA that recognizes you. You're golden, we're in. Tell the friends to come over for the party, invite the Bordetella, invite the Mycoplasma, invite the Strepzo, because there's no IgA here. That, no one recognizes us, we can crash. And you can have those mild symptoms start. And then if you have a dog that's immunized and they have IgG, because they've had a parenteral vaccination, uh, then after those symptoms set in, well then the IgG will kick in and go, go get rid of that parainfluenza. But you already have illness. You already have clinical signs at that point. Um, and then you've opened the door, right? The parainfluenza was the key holding it together for all these other party crashers that we don't have vaccines for. And if you could just get the key out of the hands of parainfluenza, maybe we wouldn't have that. And so that's what's incredible about these mucosal vaccines and this oral BBPI, um, because we can administer an oral vaccine to stimulate IgA um, development and prevent that foothold uh, or that key opening the door for respiratory infection. If I uh, vaccinate an eight-week-old puppy and his mom had incredible immunity to a lot of things that I'm vaccinating for, then I may as well just squirt that on the ground <laughs> because her antibodies are gonna go eat all of it up. And so the puppy doesn't get to develop any, any juice of their own. But the great thing about mucosal vaccines and this oral BBPI is that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if mom gave you antibodies against pear influenza and um, Bordetella. Well, I'm not competing with that because I'm administering it at the mucous membrane. So one of the great things about um, mucosally administered vaccines is not only um, can they be less stressful on the patient and their owner, but they do provide an onset of immunity that's much faster than parenterally administered vaccines. So that traditional wait two weeks, wait 21 days before we have known exposure, that this is not the same case when we're talking about mucosally administered vaccines. There was a study that was published where they, they uh, administered uh, intranasal vaccinations and to some dogs, and then to the others, they gave them parenteral for the same pathogen. And then they, they challenged them to see if they had immunity that developed and how good was it, did it you know, mitigate clinical signs, et cetera. Then they tested those dogs to see if they had IgG had they developed an immeasurable antibody titer. And the difference between those dogs who only received an intranasal vaccination versus those who were given a traditional parenteral vaccination was negligible. So they found IgG developed after an intranasally administered vaccine. So what Merck has done now is they, came, they have Intertrack, which is an intranasal um, vaccine, but for those dogs where an intranasal vaccine is not appropriate, uh, the veterinarian deems it 
not the best thing for that dog. Hey, maybe it's not the best thing for that veterinarian <laughs> to be giving an intranasal vaccine to that dog because they don't like it. Um, or a client who just doesn't want a vaccine going up their dog's nose. There's this new oral BBPI and the piece of it that's new and makes it effective because there's been oral vaccines on the market, right? But this is the first one that incorporates para-influenza. The thing about the mist is I don't have to wonder, did that dog get enough before you spit it out? Did it have long enough contact? Is that even a thing? I don't know. But with the mist, it's just a, it's a fine mist that sprays in the back of their mouth and they go, oh, well, there you go. And so it's really nice to have confidence that I did administer it correctly. I did get enough into the dog and now I don't have to worry. So I'm very excited about this new tool in my toolbox to provide protection for the social dogs that I see. And I mean, these, you know, these are the dogs that are going to the boarding kennel, they're going to the groomer, they're going to the, to the dog park. Oh, but I now have opportunity to pr protect those dogs better against CIRDC. Anytime I can make that a, a happier experience for dogs and their owners, it's a good one.